Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Style Snack. I'm April with Stunning Style, and every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, I go live and share a style snack with you um, with a particular facet of style. And today, we are on our second week of going through the classic style twists, what they look like, what details to look for. So uh, you can maybe identify them as part of your style. And today we're talking about edgy classic. And I was, a friend of mine asked me a question several years ago, and this is what started the whole thing. And she said, do you think I'm too old to wear destroyed jeans? Because I love them, but I'm 40 now. I don't want to look ridiculous. Like, am I trying too hard to be young? And I hear these kinds of questions a lot. And it's also one I was considering a lot myself because I love edgy classic style. And I would love to know in the comments if this is something you have ever considered yourself. Am I too old to wear this? Because it happens to the best of us. Most of my life, I went from one extreme to the other with my outfits. I was either super minimal classic, like right out of a Ralph Lauren catalog, or I looked like I was ready for a night out in Vegas. For me, it was pearls and cable knit sweaters or red vinyl snakeskin pants. Oh yes, I had a pair in college and platforms. At both ends of the extreme, I felt uncomfortable because I was too prim and proper like Molly Ringwald or too early morning detention regular like Ali Sheedy in The Breakfast Club. I finally realized I am a mix of three classic style twists. We're going to talk about one of them today. We talked about minimal last time, and today we're going to talk about edgy chic. And over the last few years, well, more than a few years, I've worked to find that balance of what feels good to me. What is my perfect ratio of edgy to classic? And <clears throat> something that it took me a while to figure out is that ratio can change. It can change from day to day. It can change for a period of time. It has to do with what's going on in my life, how uh, what's on my calendar that day, and you know, I've been sick for a while and I really leaned into the soft because I needed it. And recently the, I, my need for some edgy has been coming back and it has everything to do with my health and how I'm feeling. So what does my edgy chic style say about me? Well, my ratios have changed, but right now I would say, like I said, it can change about 10 or like 90%, maybe 85% classic. And then the other two edgy and soft get split between them and that can shift. But the 85, 80 to 85% classic is pretty standard. I really don't deviate from that. The other two kind of like that. And um, I love, the edgy side of sophisticated. And as a Southern lady, I'm classy, but I can definitely hold my own. I don't back down from a fight, even if you're twice my size. I stand my ground, but I don't go looking for trouble, and I'm not afraid of anyone, even if I should be. It takes a lot to set me off, but heaven help you if you do. And I laughed out loud when I read Danny Zuha's description of his wife because it sums me up so well. Who she is as a person is the flesh and blood equivalent to a box cutter. Fluorescent orange, razor sharp, and dangerous as hell to imbeciles and the unskilled. <laughs> but only if you touch the tip of the box cutter, right? The question to ask yourself about your edgy style is this. Do you want to whisper, speak, or shout? I'm more of a whisper to loud whisper kind of girl when it comes to my edgy side, and it just depends on the day. So let's talk about edgy, well, let me show you a few of my own 
edgy versions. And some of these you might be like, that doesn't look very edgy, but I'll explain why. The first one's fairly obvious. I'm wearing black leather pants. Black leather pants can also be very um, classic and minimal chic. And one of the key factors to remember here is it's not always what you wear, it's how you wear it. It's the combination of things and something that could be totally minimal when you pair it with certain other things, it, it starts to lean edgier. So um, in this case, the, the outfit is classic, but those leather pants really take it up to an edgy, edgy version. The second one doesn't look that edgy, but one thing that, uh, one direction you can go with your edgy chic is to wear eye searing color combinations super bold high contrast color combinations not everyone is going to wear purple and red together in such large quantities in a color blocked outfit um but it's very jarring and it can be very edgy in that way the third outfit i'm wearing a large houndstooth pattern and i'm carrying a, a bag that has large studs on it, but it's still a very, you know, it's a classic bowler bag style. It's got a beautiful sheen on the leather. The sweater is perfectly classic, but when you put the two together, the sweater starts to feel a little sharper. And then the fourth outfit has what you may uh, consider to be a little more overtly edgy with the destroyed jeans but you've also got these angular patterns um, in my sweater, which on their own, you may not even consider it, but when paired with these uh, destroyed jeans and the angle, like the, maybe my sandal straps are making angles, the whole combination, um, the destroyed jeans kind of amp up the edginess in the other items. So we're gonna talk about uh the difference between edgy and edgy chic i love moto jackets i actually wore mine today it finally got cold enough uh, but i prefer the mandarin collar single breasted well either the mandarin collar single breasted or the slight uh, a line zipper kind as these are the more sophisticated side of edgy the leather and zippers are edgy without being too rebel without a cause i will say i also have a uh, your typical moto jacket style but it's in this oxblood color um I don't, I don't, I used to say I would never get one, but I love it. <laughs> it's really beautiful and it feels more like the sophisticated side of, uh, of edgy to me. Now, I don't know if it's something specific about it, but I just love it. So, um, in some, there are some cases I don't like the overtly edgy details like that I do. And another thing I love to point out is that um, never say never. There's always that exception where you've said, I absolutely would not wear that. And we see the one that three wrongs make a right. And you're like, oh gosh, yes, I would. Yes, I would. I was wrong. So let's look at the difference between my outfit and Jessica Jones from the Marvel universe. And uh, she's got that definite uh, James Dean jacket. Hers is edgier with the wide flaps. The leather is, uh, it's more broken in a little, not quite destroyed, but definitely worn in. Her jeans are faded and slightly destroyed and they possibly haven't been washed this year. If you've ever watched the show, like she's, she's messy <laughs> i'll get into it um and her moto boots are they're the motorcycle style they're definitely mo destroyed and showing on the outside of her rumpled jeans she is not exactly a, 
a fashion icon right here, but it fits perfectly with her character. She's an alcoholic. Uh, from the neck out, she looks like a supermodel, but from the neck down, she looks like she's been on a bender. Now look at my moto jacket. It's shinier, just a little bit shinier. It's sleeker. It has the mandarin collar. It does not have the extra bulk that her, hers has. I'm wearing, and here we're going to kind of get into what you wear it with that makes this jacket up. It's edgy, but more sophisticated. I'm wearing very classic dark wash jeans that are tailored and fit well. A uh, classic black and white striped, large striped mock neck um, top. And I do have the studded bag and it may not be as noticeable, but on my you know, red shoes, there's a silver angular pattern down there. And my clothes are, I won't say they were steamed because they weren't, but they're not wrinkled. And this uh, would be an appropriate classic outfit I would, you know, wear to any junior league meeting. That's, you know, my, my whole outfit is polished, uh, but I still have those edgy details. So another thing is in general, I get my edgy style vibes in my accessories, jewelry, shoes, jackets, and bags, while my clothes tend to be more minimal classic, which is not how it has to be for you. It is just, that is just how it is for me. However, in certain seasons like summer, it's a lot harder to do that because, you know, you're not wearing leather pants. You don't have the layers. I'm not wearing any edgy jackets. Uh, and in summer clothes, they're lighter, they're area, there's no visual weight to them. And so in the summer, I do look for some edgy details in my wardrobe. And it can be basic things like exposed zippers on my shorts pockets, a little leather trim on a top, uh, maybe some studs, V necklines, angular patterns, anything triangular shaped, and my number one word, stabby. If my jewelry couldn't put an eye out, I am probably not wearing it when it comes to my edgy side. Stabby. Um, these hoops even, yes, they're hoops. They're a little on the bigger side. They also have a, a, a knife's edge a blade um, on the, excuse me, I need to, uh, they're not flat, they're razor edge right here. And these are sophisticated hoops, a little bigger, a little more substantial, and they've got this knife edge here, which lends edgy without looking like I'm going to punch you in the face. You can also look for uh, asymmetry, destroyed fabric, cutouts, and animal prints. They can all give an edgy vibe to classic items. So let's look at a few edgy chic details. Um, here, Michelle Williams is wearing a very classic den dark denim A-line dress, which is uh, uh, totally classic, but she's got this exposed zipper with a large zipper tab right in the front and she's wearing it with some um, ankle booties. Olivia Palermo has, she's wearing a capelet that has these diagonal exposed zippers and it also has some leather trim. Uh, again, we have Olivia Palermo wearing a classic sheath dress, but she's got that exposed zipper around the bottom that looks like you could just unzip her skirt. That's a little scandalous and it might just fall right off. I doubt it really would, but you know what I'm saying. The, the, the idea is there. And then she's got these over the knee boots, which you have to be wearing something a little short to get the effect. And they're just a little, a little edgier. So I'd love to know if any of these details are speaking to you and you're like, yeah, no, I like that. I, I like to wear that, or I would wear that. I think that would really add something to my outfit. Leather trim is another great one. And again, it can be subtle 
or more overt. It can be as subtle as piping on a neckline, like on a blazer. I've seen some with really subtle piping along here. It can be as overt as the entire front of a shirt, large panels on your pants or full leather pants. And I have a super classic trench coat that has leather sleeves and a leather collar and exposed zipper pockets. And I love it so much, I'm, I may uh, be buried in it. I may have that to be my, my funeral outfit. Large doses of leather create instant edgy style like in pants and skirts. So here are a few examples of some leather edgy. Again, I'm wearing my leather pants with this leather studded bag and these diamond shapes on my sweater. So this one's a little, a little more overtly edgy, still without being threatening. <laughs> Michelle Williams has uh, part of her lapel, has a nice leather trim. And then here we go with my, this is my trench coat that I love so much. Studs don't have to look like a Vegas showgirl costume. They can be small and subtle, uh, trim on a neckline or a pocket line, or large and noticeable on the front of a jacket. Quantity and scale determine how flashy they are. And I would say this is true of any of the details. Smaller and fewer is going to be less edgy. Bigger and more of is, is edgier. Grommets can be similar, but they're not as edgy because they're usually round. You can get edgy out of circles, but it's not as um, overtly edgy as other shapes. So uh, here I've got studs on this bag. You can see I clearly get a lot of wear out of it. And then you can't see it on my boots, but right around the edge of where the sole is, there are tiny, like, pinhead-sized studs. They're very subtle. I don't know how many people would actually even notice them, but I know they're there, and they I know they add a little something to it, and that's really what matters, is how I feel in it. And then we have Queen Letizia of Spain. Hello, she's a queen, and she's got a very elegant uh, dress with color block dress on with a row of studs across the top and down this particular color block. She looks extremely elegant and sophisticated. And then last is one of my very favorite outfits. This top has, um, these are actually small round studs, but the pattern that they make is very angular and they sit right here on my shoulder. The bag while itself is very classic. It has some classic quilting on it. Some of the quilting patterns make angles and combined with the other details adds up to the total edgy sum. And again, I'm wearing those boots that have the tiny little edgy uh, studs around them. Let's talk about angles. V necklines, triangles, asymmetry, and angular patterns are all pointy, aka stabby, sharp, angular, irregular, or um, like I said, something you can definitely put an eye out is a shape I like to have in my outfit. Even in the sweater I'm wearing today, it has, I don't know if you can see it, an angular pattern that goes like this. I don't look like I'm going to rob a bank, um, but it does kind of very subtly add to this total effect with the hoops and this. And then I wore my moto jacket when I went out earlier. Whether it's a pattern in my shirt or created by my clothes, I like to create V's in my clothes and shoes. Um, even with details like pointy toed shoes, V neck tops, or buttoning the middle of a cardigan so it creates two V's right here. And can you wear pointy-toed shoes and be perfectly classic? Absolutely you can. You Same with a v-neck, but it's all of these things add up with a few of the subtle details that I'm also wearing, and that speaks 
it tells a, a story. Okay, this cocktail dress I absolutely love. It's so chic. I would wear it to any cocktail party, but do you see the triangles and the angles on it and the asymmetry? It gives a subtle edgy message and then the dot you know the chevron quilting on the bag adds just a little bit to it and then the heels that i'm wearing um they have a very subtle snake skin pattern on them and then around the very base there's a fine gold trim and again it's ultra sophisticated but still it's got some edge to it in the second picture, I've got the crisscross straps that go down my arm and some stud detail on my bag. And then my word, would I love to find this dress that this woman is wearing with the triangular pattern that's fairly large and substantial. And then she's got that fantastic moto jacket. And I love this as an example of how you can take that um, James Dean moto style jacket and make it ultra ultra sophisticated. Um, as we've been going through these details, are there more of them that are reaching you and you're like, I, I noticed that I wear that in my wardrobe in some of these combinations, or I think I need to add some of that, those details to my, to my outfits. Next, let's talk texture. Texture in your clothes, destroyed fabric, cutouts, all suggest that Maybe you've been in a fight, <laughs> especially like destroyed jeans and things like that. That's a texture. Uh, and this detail definitely isn't for everyone. Destroyed jeans are, they're as polarizing as turtlenecks. You either love them or you loathe them. And there is no middle ground. And I'll tell you, the nastiest comments that I get on my social media is about destroyed jeans. People get so angry about me wearing them and they tell me that they would never have let their children leave the house dressed like that. I need to put on some nicer pants. I mean, they get, it, they take it very personally and it makes me laugh because I'm like, why do you care what pants I'm wearing? Because I certainly didn't ask your opinion which is probably part of my edgy side. I do not care what you think about anything, to be honest, but particularly about my outfit. And I am in the can't live without them camp. Is every pair of pants I wear destroyed? Absolutely not. I, I truly love my classic dark wash jeans, my black jeans. Uh, I only have a few pairs of destroyed jeans. They fit. They scratch that itch, they fill that hole, and I only need them with specific outfits and clothing that feel just a little too buttoned up for me. And on the other hand, I will not wear a destroyed sweater or shirt. To me, a torn shirt is just, it's not me. It's too much, it's too homeless, I don't know. Um, I do know that I'm not into them at all. And that is part of knowing my personal style and accepting it. Am I offended if other people wear them? No. <laughs> do I think they're terrible dressers if they wear them? No. <laughs> it makes, and you, there are some fantastic outfits that I see other people wearing with that look. It's just not for me, but I like it on them because it is their style and it's none of my business anyway. So. Um, but I would wear a white mesh sweater. I have some of those. It hints at, at chain mail, to be honest. And I have a couple of them. I, I love them. Texture could be jute trim on a wedge sandal. It can be lace in shapes that are angular and edgy, like triangles or rectangles. You know, again, leather trim, chunky knit sweaters, quilted jackets, metallics, chain details, mesh, ribbing, and more. These can all contribute to your edgy style, 
but once again, they're not exclusive to edgy style. So here we have Olivia Palermo wearing a mesh style sweater. Like I uh, mentioned, I have a couple of these. Here I am wearing the ultimate offensive outfit. I'm wearing not only a turtleneck, but also destroyed jeans because I am so controversial. And then I've got the wide double set of crisscrosses on my wedge sandals. I even have stabby hair. When I curl my hair, if it doesn't kind of look like snakes coming off my head, I've done it wrong. And that would be the second most offensive thing that I wear that people get so angry about. Like they're actually angry. These comments are unbelievably rude. I don't care. Again, I, I actually like it. There's one outfit. I, my hair was one of the best hair days I've ever had. And it's the one that gets the most, the most angry comments. And like, I need to brush my hair and I, should I have washed my hair today? And I can't believe your mother let you out of the house. I'm 47 years old. My mother, um, does not dictate what I do and do not leave the house. And, <clears throat> and then, on, but she, she likes my hair. So there you go. Um, on the last slide, this is a square eyelet. You would never think of eyelet as being edgy. And again, in and of itself, this square eyelet, it's definitely not cutesy. Um, but you know, you add it up with the croc texture on my bag and the scarf that's tied to it has little triangles and the trim is making angular shapes because of the way it's folded. I have on these metallic pointy toe leather flats. This is a very subtle edgy outfit. The one in the middle is far uh, more overtly edgy, but that's what I needed on each of those days. And if you do hate my my destroyed jeans, my turtleneck or my hair and you're here right now. I, I don't I don't care. Don't tell me. Um, <clears throat> next up is animal prints. And animal prints can be tricky um, because again, they can be classic. they can they can be anything. You can wear a leopard print and it can fall into any style on the planet. Again, it's how, you wear it. Um, the one, the one that I, you can, you can wear anyone. I don't, I don't tend to wear zebra patterns because zebras don't eat people. You know what I mean? Leopards eat people, snakes eat people or, you know, kill people. These, for me, edgy comes from dangerous animals, but you can wear, you can wear a zebra, a bold zebra pattern can be very edgy. It's just not my version of edgy. Um, croc, croc, I love croc. Crocodiles also eat people. Um, and, but I do prefer my, my personal like snake skin needs to be a solid color. I don't, I don't personally care for, you know, the multicolored versions. Um, and then we cannot have a discussion about edgy classic style without mentioning the color of my soul, black. <laughs> black is as edgy classic as it gets. Um, you can wear black as much as you want and not be edgy, but this is a guaranteed, it's just a guaranteed uh, edgy, uniform and wearing all black you can get an instant edgy factor especially if you add you know a detail like an accessory or two um so in these outfits in the first one i am once again wearing the the ragey turtleneck but my pants have a large tone on tone houndstooth pattern um, my clutch is snakeskin. These booties are actually not black. They're a very deep oxblood color, which, you know, you've got dried blood right there. They're patent, which is shiny and bold. And then they're um, a pointy toe. 
And I clearly want to rile people up because here again, I'm wearing a turtleneck, but with black jeans, the angular or the studded bag and my leopard flats. And I, I actually will wear this outfit with the moto jacket you see on the right. And that's the outfit that I say, if Audrey Hepburn and James Dean had a baby, this is what she would wear. Um, which is very similar, I guess, to what I'm wearing in the last one, except it's not a turtleneck, it's a crew neck sweater. These pants have a tone on tone leopard pattern with a very subtle leather trim, pi just piping down the sides. I've got my studded bag again um, and the moto jacket, but they're all classic pieces, except maybe the bag. Uh, but th when you add them up, they're just, they're edgy. That's just, they just are. Okay, now let's talk accessories. I love them. And this is where I really love to bring in uh, my edgy details. And that is, again, summed up in one word stabby <laughs> and if it couldn't double as a weapon i'm not getting the edgy out of my jewelry a lot of my jewelry is sharp pointy angular and dangerous they usually have some sort of razor edge a triangular or diamond shape to them my shoes have stabby toes my husband used to joke he didn't like when i wore pointy toe shoes because it made him feel like i was going to kick him in the shins i have actually never kicked my husband in the shins, I kicked out, you know, I kicked him playfully or whatever, usually with, you know, the back of my heel, <laughs> but um, they, they are stabby. You could, you could do some damage to a shin in those. Um, textures like jute or snakeskin, extra straps, um, and either super stabby or chunky substantial heels, one extreme or the other. My bags might be textured, quilted, studded, have chain details, extra zippers, um, and all the, all, the, all the accessories I've showed you so far. Angular, PC, sharp, textured hair, or super sleek and blunt uh, is my number one edgy accessory. And you can see that as you look back from, uh, through my various outfit pictures on Instagram. And if you're not following me on Instagram, should be and rj will leave a link in the comments here so we've talked this whole thing is about edgy chic edgy classic we're talking about the sophisticated end of edgy so where is the classic on this well the classic is in the style and fit of my clothes i love button-ups dark wash tailored jeans even if they're a little destroyed they fit me perfectly shirt dresses stripes chino shorts pencil skirts, flats, loafers, trench coats, and a very tailored fit. The overall look of my clothing and style of most of my clothing is classic, and I sprinkle in some edgy details to add a whisper of danger. Um, I have a black pencil skirt with leather panels on, uh, leather panels on the front and back. Some of my button-ups are flannel and give some of that texture. And then I love to pair them with my moto jacket. And that increase, that it just makes that flannel just a little edgier. I mean, anybody remember grunge in the 90s? Like the flannel shirt was the edgy, grungy staple. You couldn't be grungy without a flannel shirt but I wear it on my body buttoned up instead of wrapped around my waist. Now, most of my striped tees have very wide, substantial, more like color blocking stripes, which is edgier than a fine stripe. My classic black leather pumps are pointy toed and they have a nice sheen to the, ledger, the leather, but the heel um, is also very fine and it has a textured leather or lizard skin leather, which other people may not notice, but I, I know it's there. A classic, um, shirt dress is timeless, but I'll wear it with stabby jewelry and maybe a chunky belt and some stabby shoes. 
most of my wardrobe is solid colors, which is also more classic and it can tone down the edge. All the details with a lot of pattern would be too much for me personally. It's all about balance. I just listed a whole lot of options for adding edgy details to your outfits, but I don't wear them all at the same time. That's when you lean very heavily edgy, which you can. If that's your style, by all means, do it. Um, you pick and choose based on the combination that feels right and for your mood or for your day. If I have edgy details in my top, then I will go for classic pants, meaning no extra leather exposed zippers or holes. And when wearing leather pants or destroyed jeans, I will keep it classic in the shirt and outerwear. I have big edgy jewelry and I have small edgy jewelry and I have, I have, this is a very classic piece. This is a special gift for my husband. I wear it every day. This is very classic, but it's also more substantial, which isn't necessarily edgy, but it doesn't feel dainty either. And it really depends on what I'm wearing. Like Sometimes it's got more of a choker. It's not like full choker, but it sits right up here. It's got more of that choker feel to it. And it can play more as a choker depending on what I'm wearing. And I'll tell you uh, one experience that I had. <clears throat> I remember this is when I was starting to figure out that I needed some edge. I was, uh, I was at the mall. My little girl was in a stroller and I was unbelievably uncomfortable with my outfit. I was wearing a Breton tee and I had on a pink cardigan. Um, it was more like a boyfriend cardigan and some pointy toe flats and some jeans. And I just felt like the mommiest mom who had ever mommed. And it was a really cute outfit, but I just, oh, I was so uncomfortable. So what I did was I went into one of my favorite stores for jeans and I bought a pair of destroyed jeans, my first pair of destroyed jeans. I had gone into this store before and tried on these destroyed jeans, and I was trying to get the sales associate to give me permission to buy them. And I kept saying, I really love these jeans, but I'm probably too old for, for destroyed jeans, right? And they were like, yeah, whatever. And I'm like, but I mean, they, they look good on me. I, I you know. I, I don't know if I'd wear them though. I might feel uncomfortable because I maybe I'm too old for these and she was not picking up what I was putting down. And so that time I had left this time I walked straight into that store. I tried them on, I bought them, I changed, I paid. And then I went and changed in the fitting room and I felt like a new woman. Suddenly that striped shirt and that cardigan felt perfect because I got the edgy balance that I needed and it was, it was a very, um, I don't want to say life changing moment for me. It was a style changing. It was a big aha moment for me. Uh, that was when I realized, cause I was starting to think, ah, I, this car, oh, cardigans, no striped shirts. No, which I love striped shirts. And I finally discovered the right cardigans for me. It was the, I needed something to balance it where I was ready to toss the whole concept of the outfit. I just needed to change one thing. Um, so let's look at an outfit that got a little balance for me. These, this is a very classic outfit, you know, three quarter sleeve sweater, some black jeans, um, the denim jacket. Um, and I'm wearing those boots that have a slight, those tiny little studs around the base. This classic bag has some angular quilting to it. And for me, a denim jacket is a great way to add. It's classic, but it still adds a little of that edge. Uh, and it's, it's kind of like the denim version of your moto jacket, right? You can wear it any way you want to, but in this case, 
uh, it was just what I needed for this outfit and the booties too. If I had worn this with some round toed flats, no, no ma'am, that would not have felt edgy for me and I would have been uncomfortable in it. And let's look at just a few more outfit examples. So here we have, again, Olivia Palermo. I really love her style. And she's got this, uh, this choker. It's very unusual um, and unexpected, which can be edgy. She's wearing all black. She's got this big, chunky bracelet on these these funky sunglasses and then she's got these super sexy strappy sandals that are making all of these angular points and like a super skinny heel and she's paired it with something that's just like effortlessly cool uh but it's so chic and sophisticated and then we have sandra bullock in the middle wearing um a leather pencil skirt very classic and a black button up blouse and she's got those chunky bracelets super sophisticated but just it's got that edgy vibe and then on the far right um i always forget her name i'm having a mind blank right now i'll we i have her uh photo credit in the in the blog post you can see but um she's got the all black outfit very classic but she's got that James Dean leather style jacket. Hers is even more sophisticated because the hardware is tone on tone. You don't have that high contrast silver hardware. Uh, and she doesn't have like, she doesn't appear to even have extra zippers beyond the one that uh, zips up the front. So that's an even more sophisticated version of that one. And she's got these large, they're pearls, but they're large and chunky and, you know, it's strand of three and they're hanging low kind of, uh, drawing the eye to her decolletage, which is a little scandalous, right? But um, a little sexy, edgy can lean, uh, it can lean sexy in a, in whatever way you want, but it can be a very chic, chic way. Um, so are you ever too old to dress edgy? No, you're not. If edgy is who you are, then it's more like public service announcement, to be honest, um, in representing you through your style. So think of it as truth and advertising. I am not cute, fun, sweet. I'm not, no one ever calls me sweet. I'm nice. I'm loyal. And I make it a point to leave anyone I come in contact with, um, better than when I left them a little happier, or at least no worse than you can't, you know, I can't be responsible for other people's happiness. Neither can you, but I'm a very compassionate person, but I'm not sweet. And when people, you know, people like to dismiss compliments. Oh, you're so sweet. No, I'm not sweet. Um, I'm never disingenuous. And so if I compliment you, it's, it's, it's sincere. And I also have sharp, edges. I can be, I'm learning to le be less blunt because I would never intentionally hurt someone's feelings, but it can happen when you're a straight shooter. Um, I, when I'm uncomfortable, I can say inappropriate things. <laughs> I just, I can be super socially awkward in a very uh, blunt way. And reaching a certain birthday does not change anything about, about me. It doesn't change anything about you. Changing how I dress won't change who I am. And I won't become the type of person who hugs strangers or uh, acquaintances. I don't speak softly and sweetly all the time. And I won't suddenly stop sharing my many opinions. I'm, I have many of them. I'm happy to hand them out. So why should I be expected to change my style to reflect something I'm not? Just because of the number of candles on my cake, it would be a lie. And like I said, I am never disingenuous.
There are so many more examples uh, that you can see about this on, on the blog, in the blog post. I go through in detail exactly what makes each of these outfits um, edgy chic. And we'll leave the, um, if you're on my email list, you'll receive an email later today letting you know that the blog post is available. So if you're not on my email list, definitely get on that. And RJ has left the link here. Um, you definitely don't want to miss what we have. And I hope this helped you discover more about your style. Even if edgy doesn't speak to you, learning about it can help you see what not to wear. Because if you're wearing something and it's a little off, you could, be ha you could have all the right details for your style, but have some of the wrong details that aren't your style. And being able to recognize these, if you're not edgy, you could be like, I see it now that those exposed zippers, like large exposed zippers on my sweater or you know jacket or bag, that is what's throwing me off. So either way, I hope you found this helpful. Let's take a look at the comments. Um, I can't always see your name. There's a link that you can click uh, in the, the announcement post, I think, that allows me to see your name. Um, but someone says, hi, April. Hello. Renee is here. She says, hello. Anita says, I don't look at ratios. I look at what I like. And if I like it, then I get it. My likes determine what I buy. Anita, that is absolutely perfect. Um, for someone who is, and it sounds like you know a lot about your style, for someone who's learning to balance these types of things, thinking in ratios can help them troubleshoot an outfit. If they can see that they, they're leaning heavy in one direction, that that could be what is feeling uncomfortable. If they've got too much of one and not enough of another, that can really help anyone um, troubleshoot what's going on. Someone says, I love Jessica Jones. Oh, I do too. Have you, did you see, it used to be on Netflix, the Jessica Jones series. I love the Daredevil one as well. I saw a few of them. There were a couple I didn't watch and now they're off Netflix and I believe they're on Disney Plus, but those are so good. Someone else says, I do like the subtle edgy details. Another one of you says, I love edgy details. Someone else says, I wear the Vs. Mm -hmm, me too. Like, no one would look at this sweater. I mean, can you see the Vs in this that close? It goes all the way to the bottom. Um, and then it splits off on this side. No one would look at that and be like, gosh, April, look at you in that edgy sweater. You're going to hit up a 7-Eleven. It just, it just adds up in, in small ways. Brenda says, I agree. A torn shirt, jacket, or top is just not for me either. Yeah. And, and for some people that would be perfect. And maybe they wouldn't like the destroyed jeans, or maybe they like both. It's just personal preference. Someone says, I love the top you're wearing. Please share the details. Um, I would have to find the details. I got it at the rack a while ago. That's what I can tell you. Someone says, my husband and kids call them my pointy witch shoes. Yes, that means you're on the right track. <laughs> Someone says, yes, this is very thorough info. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. And like I said, there are more examples on uh, the blog post. Someone says, excellent. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. Um, Another person says, I find in the late fall and winter, I'm drawn to wearing more edgy clothing. I wonder if it's become, if it's because it becomes darker earlier, which is my subconscious mind that equals more danger. Interesting. Less food resources. So I feel the need to put on my armor to protect myself. That's a fa fascinating observation. I have never thought of it that way, but it could be that that just built into our DNA to protect ourselves. Um, there are a lot of uh, behaviors that are built into our survival instincts that have been bred into us for survival for millennia. That's, that's really interesting. I, I appreciate you sharing that. I know that 
the time in my life when I was leaning super heavily into edgy, like it was more like 60, 40, 40% 40 edgy was when I was uh, struggling with severe depression. And it was a way of keeping people away from me at arm's length. Uh, not to say that other people do it, you know, for that reasons, but it was a reason for me that I was so heavily into it. It was my armor, as you say. Uh, Charmaine says the mom's mom that ever mommed <laughs> and laughs. I know it's some women love the mom's mom that ever mommed look and it's perfect for them, but it just, it's not right for me. Brenda says, I'm not sweet either. You get it. You totally get it. And I get you too. And then someone else says thinking in ratios is very helpful and something I had not thought of. Yeah. It, it's been very helpful for me too. And even, um, I've had, you know, your, your style is always evolving. It can be in major ways as you're trying to find your style, or it can be in subtle ways, uh, as you go through life transitions. And I finally acknowledged, recognized and acknowledged a few years ago that I do have some softness to me. And I used to swear vehemently that that had zero softness in me. And now I know I do. And I was subconsciously including some soft details and just ignoring them and saying, well, that, that can also be classic. Right. And, um, now I know I do have some soft details and I leaned very heavily into them the last couple of years when I was really not feeling well, because it's what I needed. I needed that. I needed to lean into that softness. It was very soothing and comforting. And, um, but that didn't, doesn't mean that it wasn't right or real because it is. I've always had that in my wardrobe. Um, it went away during those, those years of depression, but, um, and I had, and for a while I, you know, last year or so I've been thinking, maybe I just don't have any edgy left in me. I didn't, I didn't want to wear anything edgy at all. And and, and now that I, I've been feeling better, um, I want, I want some of it again because it's just part of who I am. I, I hadn't worn, I, I wore that moto jacket. I mean, I've had it for years and I have worn and worn and worn and worn and worn it. And, uh, last fall and winter, I, I did not want to put it on. I didn't, I didn't put it on. I, I, every time I thought about it, I was like, mm -hmm but I wore it this morning and I loved it. <laughs> I pulled it out of the closet and I was like, I want to wear this today. It's been the first kind of weather that it, you know, it was wearable and I loved it. It felt so good to put it on because now is a time in my life when I'm ready to bring that back into my, my style into who, you know, it's, it's into me again. So as I've been, I have a point, <laughs> you know, as I have gone through this kind of evolution and, and moments and times in my life, I would reconsider the ratios because I used to say I was 80, 20, 85, 20, 90, 10 minimal and edgy. And I've been having to rethink that. And we've got to make room for soft in there. And where, where is that ratio shifting? Am I losing a little bit of the minimal and keeping exactly the amount of edgy and then having equal parts edgy and soft. And the truth is it depends on the day and the season of my life. And so my ratios do shift, but it's always 80 ish percent minimal and then maybe even up to 90%. And then I divide the others up based on what I need at that moment. So I'm super glad that those ratios help you. And that I hope that for many of you that can give you some guidance as to how you, um, how you consider what needs you have in your wardrobes and in your outfits, kind of just, you know, break that down an outfit that feels amazing. Kind of look at how much you have proportionally. 
Well, I want to thank you for joining me today. I absolutely have missed doing these style snacks with you. They are one of the highlights of my week, and I'm so glad to be back. I hope you'll join me next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. We are going to talk about the third chic style twist, and it's going to be a surprise, but you can narrow it down to three. <laughs> um, and it again, even if you feel like I found my place, this is edgy. No, you, that may not be all. I, almost nobody is just one, and you can be a combo, even all five. And again, even if the next week's doesn't necessarily ring true for you, knowing those details and what to stay away from is equally as important. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, a wonderful rest of your week, and I will see you soon.